Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, today we got a little quick uh, roach coach. Um, I got a problem with my uh, my heavy duty grinder. Uh, we have to fix uh, minor problem, but uh, it'll make an interesting uh, short video because uh, we're going to use a little different technique uh, um, to create the pattern for it. Um, Let's see what else. I think that's about it. The other thing I wanted to uh, share with you guys is uh, I got a, a flyer from Traverse Tool, and um, they're having a, a little sale on YG. That's uh, YG end mills, and these are these fine pitch uh, roughing end mills that I really like. Um, so they're multi flute, uh, high speed steel, um, cobalt, and uh, now these are the uh, these powdered metal ones here, but um, uh, these work wonderfully across the board. So if you haven't tried a roughing end mill, get yourself one of these here. And um, they have a bunch of different sizes. They're on sale. And the secret code, I'm going to give you guys a secret code. Uh, it's a coupon code M, as in Mary. Um, so you can get some sale prices on that. So that's Traverse Tool. Go check them out. And uh, if you need a uh, a roughing end mill, uh, grab one of those and, uh, and give it a try and I think you'll be real happy with it. So anyway, uh, let's get to our project and uh, let's get going. Okay, so I got my, uh, my big heavy duty uh, Milwaukee grinder here. Um, I've been using it to radius the edges of this hand wheel and um, it has or it had a black plastic boss on the back of this here. So when you're you know you're done, you, you flip it over and you and you well you drop it on its uh, on its back so that you're not setting the sanding disc down while it's spinning or you know and then warping it. Um, but I haven't used this in a while. I've been using the smaller grinders, and this is what's left of it. And it's it's just a crispy critter, so you know it's finally just gotten so old and <laughs> I don't know radiation hardened or whatever. I don't I don't understand uh, what happened to it, but it's given up the ghost. Um, and I can't even read the model number off of this to look on Milwaukee site uh, to get a replacement. This is a really old grinder here. This is probably uh, 30 years old at least. Um, uh, it still works fine. It's uh, 13 amp and it weighs a ton, but that's kind of what you want when uh, you're doing a lot of grinding because the weight of the grinder does the work for you, okay? Now, if you're grinding like this, no, okay? Or if you're grinding like this, no, but if you're grinding in kind of the normal attitude, all you got to do is steer this thing properly, <laughs> key, key element there, steer it properly, and uh, you know the weight of the grinder kind of helps you out. Uh, where the little ones, you gotta you gotta push on them a little bit, and uh, um, and they tend to grab, they tend to gouge more because they're spinning faster, and uh, uh, they don't have such a broad a broad contact of the abrasive. So anyway, blah 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 blah. Um, what we're gonna do is I got some plastic here, and this is uh, kind of like cutting board material here. Um, a um, high density polyethylene, something like that. Um, I don't know, I picked it up, uh, there, we were throwing some out or whatever. Um, but it's a good thickness and it's, it's got the right kind of qualities. It's a little bit soft, um, so it's, it, it'll pad and it's easy to work with. So I've taken some measurements here um, of the, the mounting holes and the, and the shape of this. I'll go make a little uh, computer drawing and we'll, we're going to paste that right on here and we're going to work right off of that uh, to create a new one of these. And uh, anyway, that's the job. Yeah, that's the... Uh, anyway, I kept setting it down and this stuff's going... Blowing apart, but uh, um, anyway, I'll figure it out. Okay, so we got our little... Uh, Full scale drawing here done on the uh, um, inkjet uh, printer. So what I'm going to do here is 
I got a nice straight edge here, and what we want to do is be able to line that up with a nice straight edge on my blank. So I'm just going to trim the paper right to the line along that one edge. And then the rest of this, I'll just leave it kind of big. Something like that. Okay. And take a good side here. Okay, and then I'm gonna put some uh, some spray glue on the back and we're gonna pop that down and hopefully it'll stick to that. Okay, so I shot uh, uh, some of this stuff on there. This is repositionable here. Um, I put a fair amount on because this plastic is slippery. Potentially slippery. Okay, I think it's going to be okay. Okay, so we're over in the mill now, and I'm just going to... You know, this isn't any uh, kind of hyper-precision stuff here, so I'm just going to use a pointer to pick up the uh, my little guide dot there that I put in. And that guide dot is... It's just a circle that's uh, 15 mils in diameter, 15 thousandths. Alright, that looks pretty good. Yep, I'll buy that for a quarter. Okay, so uh, we'll get a drill in there. Oop. And um, so on plastics, it's not always the best to use a real high spindle speed. Uh, some some are are easy to uh, to melt. So oop. easy to melt. All right, well, we'll just have to pat that down. So it's sometimes better to use a, uh, a slower spindle speed on them uh, so you don't get any, uh, any melting, especially with drilling in a deep hole like that. And yeah, these are warm coming out of that hole. And you notice I'm packing, I'm not staying in the hole very long. Okay. All right, so we're ready to counter bore. Here's the, uh, this is the screw. And uh, so we got a counter bore so that uh, that seats down on the gr on the grinder and then the, the screw is down below s the surface. So we've actually got <laughs> a pretty long ways to go here. Um, I think it was three quarters of an inch deep. So I'm gonna zero on the surface here with the quill, DRO, and then we're going to very gingerly sneak our way down. take it out of the machine right now but uh, let's see if I can drop that down the chute there I can get a peek on the side here and see how it looks and I think that looks pretty good okay I'm starting it real gentle so I don't shred the paper.
All right, so that gives us two nice internal radii uh, that we don't have to fart around with. So okay, so um, we've got our uh, our holes and our internal radii, and now there's a little bit of work on the back side. Um, there's a projection on the grinder that we have to clear, so we have to mill a little slot in the back that uh, that clears those. So we need to set it up on this side and and pick it up again. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drop into one of our holes here because we already kind of started up one of those holes. So we're just going to go back to zero here on the DRO, something like that, like so. And then I'm just leaving this loose. I'm just going to drop that in like so. And then I'm just pushing down on this now. And now I'm going to just snug the vise a little bit. Okay. So that's just a quick, a quick uh, flip over pickup there. And now what we'll do is we'll move over to the center and we're going to plow a groove in that. Well, that yellow and green goes together good, huh? That should be it. Let's double check before we take it out. Yeah, it looks good. Got our depth. Okay, I think we're ready for a test fit. All right, so here you can see the uh, you can see these projections that I was trying to clear. Pretty good. Sitting down on there. Okay, I can see threads down my holes here, which is usually a good sign. All right, let's go uh, cut out that profile and uh, wrap this turkey up. Okay, so we're just going to do a little hand work on this. Now, some of you might ask, uh, hey, why don't you just go over to the belt sander and belt sand that? And you probably might be able to do that. But this stuff is so soft and gummy, it's kind of like belt sanding wax. Um, it's really not going to work that well. So what I'm using here, um, oh, guess what? It's made by Noga. Um, this is a piece of ceramic here um, that's just square. Um, it's not particularly sharp, but it works really well on soft gummy plastics um, for deburring. Um, it's, it's like super hard fingernail, right, where you can kind of scratch off what you want um, with some control. Um, so it works real good on uh, kind of softer gummy or plastic. Uh, for deburring and whatnot, um, where a razor blade or a, a something uh, sharp is is just too sharp and it cuts in, you know, uh, and gouges. So this I can just kind of work at it and scrape off what I want, you know. Anyway, this will take a little while, not not too long, um, but anyway, I'll get a relatively smooth finish on it and uh, I won't melt it and then we'll put that on and uh, we'll call it we'll call it done hmm. Let's tighten the screws up a little bit okay so we'll do a demo of how this thing gets used. That's how it gets used. <laughs> it's just a it's just a thing to set it down on the back so you're not crashing it down on the case. 
anyway, that's how it works, and uh, I'm done. Thanks for watching.